organization was Christian. So the Bible, Old Testament, identified what are evils, what are okays, etc. So now when we take away the Bible, how do we determine what's good and what's wrong? Evil. Democracy. Let's, uh, we, we have a principle here. Democracy, where the majority agree on something, that's what's good. If the majority don't agree, they feel otherwise, then that's what's bad. That's our principle. What that does, of course, is it removes any solid basis for morality in the society. Because if the majority feel something is good today, it's good. If they think it's bad tomorrow, it becomes bad. What was bad today can become good. So, where is your basis? And that's exactly what has happened in the society. That the, the values that were held have been turned upside down. Before uh, the 70s, if you asked anybody in the 60s, for example, about homosexuals, they would say, oh, bad people, corrupt, sick, an abomination unto the Lord, as in the Old Testament. And the psychiatrist considered them to be ill. They had all these treatments in their psychi psychiatric man manuals, you know, electric treatment, drug treatments, all kinds of treatments for them. <laughs> but by the middle 70s, things turned around. All of a sudden, you ask the average American, what's the case of homosexuals? They say, alternative lifestyles. <laughs> you know, it's just an, an, another way of living, you know. Different strokes for different folks. You know? <laughs> this, this is how it's put, you know. It's, who am I to say? I, I personally not, but you know, they, they want to be that way. It's, it's their thing. It's okay. And the psychiatric profession removed the illness of homosexuality from the book, and they replaced it with what? Homophobia. <laughs> Those people who consider, who still have the nerve to consider homosexuals to be sick and, you know, despicable, etc. These people are now sick. And they need to go to the psychiatrist and get, you know, reprogrammed, corrected. Right? And uh, I don't know if you've been following the news, but recently I was banned from Germany for life. Right? I gave a lecture in, in Germany, in Frankfurt, Germany. This is just three, three months ago, two months ago. And alhamdulillah, big public lecture after it, 17 Germans accepted Islam. Alhamdulillah. After that, on my way to the hotel, the German SWAT team came and surrounded the car and took me down to the police station and read me a manifesto from the, the mayor of Frankfurt saying, you are banned from Germany for life. Why? Because you advocate the execution of homosexuals. I said, what? <laughs> How is that? You know, yeah, Islamic law says that, you know, if you're caught in the act in an Islamic state, you will be executed. If you've been seen by four witnesses, etc., execution, that's the law. They say, but, but the homosexuals are a respected part of our society whose rights should be protected against anyone who would speak ill of them. You know, and uh, we fear that you, even though, yes, you're saying that you don't call for their execution, that this is Islamic law, but we fear that at some time you may say this to the young people and tell them to go out and kill homosexuals. So therefore, we will ban you for life. You know. So, uh, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> you know, this is, this is their position. And of course, uh, you know, this is just an ongoing uh, saga with the homosexuals. So, if you go on YouTube and you click Islam and homosexuality, there's only one lecture, mine. <laughs> I gave one lecture, a part of a series of lectures, which basically was in defense of Islamic law and its rulings concerning adultery, you know, theft, etc. You know, it, it talked about many other things, but among them was homosexuality and its punishment in Islam. It was a lecture given in defense of Islamic law. It looked at all of the arguments of the homosexuals. They like to say, you know, it's nature. It's in nature. It's not unnatural like you all are saying. Because we can find a fish off the coast of Japan 
who, when the male mates with the female, he now starts to act like a female. So the other males come and try to, you know, mate with him, and that way they don't get to his female. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a fish like that off, off the coast of Japan. And there's a, also a butterfly in South America that does the same thing. So he said, it's not unnatural. So I said there that, okay, we also have the black widow spider. You know, the black widow spider, when she finishes mating with her husband or mate, she kills him and eats him. So is that okay now? Uh, we say it's natural for wives if they, you know, have that inclination to kill their husbands and eat them. <laughs> so I, said, so I, I went through their genetic arguments and all the different arguments and I showed that they were false. So I've attacked <laughs> the homosexuals according to their, you know, judgment. Because it is not for them, it's not enough to say, well, okay, we accept you. You have the right to make your choice. No, they're saying, don't even say anything against us. Not only toleration, we want to be respected and liked. And they have now introduced into the educational systems of the West, in the States, uh, kids in grade one on the East Coast have a book which is called My Two Dads. Yeah, grade one, my two dads. In it, Johnny has two dads, you know, Tommy has a dad and a mom. But Johnny's two dads, they're really great guys, you know, they take him to the beach, they take him to the playground, they take him here, they take him there, you know. To get the children used to the idea of two dads. In England, the book they have is called The Prince. Grade one, grade two students. The kingdom of so-and-so, they had a prince who they were trying to get a wife for. The parents were bringing this young, beautiful princess and this one. But no, 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 he didn't like this one. Finally, he met another prince. And they liked each other and they were close. And they were, uh, you know, so, you know, very subtly feeding these ideas into the society. So they are coming at... The, you know, that civilization, they're coming at them in full force. In full force. And of course, it's coming at us too. Because from there, it comes to us. It's just a matter of time.